Hi there, it's Lucas from Bardscraft. I'm sitting here on a floor protective mat used in constructions and such. I demanded that the workers would leave the mat after completing the renovations in my place. Now I can make big mats for big encounters. Follow along. All right, I want battle mats for several terrain types. Now that I have this big mat, we have enough material to make ourselves four mighty battle mats. I plan on making these double-sided, therefore, two good pieces need to be cut out. I like to use long ranges, big obstacles and buildings in combat. The mats need to be large. Fifty by ninety centimeters should do well, so about this much in inches. For decent 90 degree corners, I used the largest book I had available, then drew lines where to cut. Luckily, the other half of the material is also 50 cm wide. I could now easily get the second battle mat as well. Just as planned, right? Just need to make sure we don't destroy the table. Good, I cut out the battle mat. Good, the mats are cut out. They will be a bit more stylish and durable once I cut away some from the corners. The grid helps a lot here, no need to draw lines. One, two, three, four, you are no more. There we have the mats, time to turn them into battle mats. I'll start by painting the edges black, just in case I forget it later. Since I have double sided battle mats, I can't paint them all at once, so I'll start with the stone and snow terrain. For the stone mat, I mixed a dark grey, then started covering the surface. Best to keep the paint semi-dry to minimize any kind of warping. No problems yet. To create a bit of texture, I tapped over everything like this. Tapping also hides some of the streaks from the brush. While that dries, I'll take the other mat and continue by painting the snowboard. First, a bluish grey. This has less coverage than the black, so I was a bit more careful here. Now the blue-grey is dry. With a bright blue, I started tapping with the brush. A large brush makes this easier. After tapping for a while, I figured it looks better with more paint on the brush. Done. I let that dry as well as the washed brush. A completely dry brush is essential for dry brushing, as the name says. Okay, then I dry brush the snow mat with white. I don't think the dry brushing will work. Tapping it is. Now, while tapping with the brush, I had a moderate amount of paint on the brush. We need plenty of white. I kept painting like this for a while, making sure that the snow is uneven. This does take some time, but it's pretty fun to hit things with the brush. Perhaps if you use spray paints, this could be quicker. Of course, the transition would be smoother. Not sure if that's good or bad. Okay, this surely looks good. More like partially covered ice. This is also blue enough to be used as a sea battle mat. Barely. Never thought of that. Amazing. Back to the stone mat. I'll try dry brushing it with the grey color first. Okay, what the hell. That's way too much black. This part is now a good grey. I'll store the rest in a box so I don't look like a wasteful buffoon. A proper dry brush. Let's see. That seems to work. Looks enough like stone to me. By no means does the stone need to be even. So a messy dry brush is what I aim for. Meh, screw the fancy brush. I don't know if this can be called dry brushing anymore. I also brushed some of the spots with brown. My intention is to use this as a mat for both cave and dungeon terrain. There, now I'll quickly brush over with some white. The brush dries faster in the oven. Okay, I like this surface. Should look good with the grid. I will now move to the grass terrain, covering everything with a dark green. As I mixed more paint, the colors changed. Good. That's good, because we don't want a completely clean coat of the same color. Then I used yellow and started tapping intensely. My camera can't handle yellow and green, for some reason. Or perhaps I suck, but here is an image after the tapping was done. Lots of tapping is required, it seems. Then, as you can see, I also made some brown areas to make this a bit more. I'm excited to draw the grids, then the mats will look complete. Just the savanna or desert map first. I'll try to use similar colors as in the modular pyramid I did in the beginning of this channel. 
thanks to whoever was already part of this channel at that time. First, I covered the mat in a mixture of brown and yellow. I got myself a big jar of brown. Always run out of that stuff. Epic dragon slaying music in the background. I didn't mix enough paint for a full coverage, but that's okay, as you can see. Tapping with the brush again, now with a yellow or beige color. Finally, some white. Okay, that looks good for me. Moving on to the grid. For my games, a larger grid works well for terrain that is more open. So, this savanna or desert mat will get a 9x9cm grid. The dungeon or stone battle mat is more often used for encounters where quick measurements come in handy. With a permanent marker, and with the other mat as a ruler, I drew a 3cm grid here. The snow, ice or sea terrain and the grassy woodland mat also got a 9cm grid. Alright, now let me show you how I use these mats. The grass mat. Here is something I might set up for an encounter. When roughly converting feet to meter, one square is the distance that most creatures can move during their turn. Pretty handy. Next, the ice and snow mat. Also barely usable as sea terrain. The one time I will have a sea encounter, this mat will do. These are all ice compatible miniatures and terrain you can find on the channel. The cave or dungeon floor battle mat is well used together with walls that create rooms or corridors. Here is a reconstruction of corridor warfare in the Sunless Citadel. Minis are missing. It was a fun game. I do also use cave and dungeon tiles. The battle mat just looks good under these, even if it's not actively being used. I'm not fully convinced by this one. I got the colors a bit wrong. At least it doesn't go perfectly with the pyramid. As dry grass terrain it works just fine. And it's okay as desert. All the other maps are good and will prove very useful. Now I have a much higher baseline for the terrain quality of any encounters. Amazing. Did I miss any obvious types of terrain? Most likely. Hope you find this useful. Subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode where I can speak normally. Until then, craft more terrain and miniatures. Good luck. Also, thanks to the patrons. If you really appreciate the content, be sure to check out Bardscraft on Patreon. Perhaps you'll find something there. Thanks.